In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up or thunder real-time information with my custom display and how to do controller bindings for the app so you don't have to mess with the keyboard uh, while you're in War Thunder. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is download the new uh, real-time information app. which I'll post a link to it in the description. Download. And then you can see here that they've added uh, VR support with key bindings. So click on War Thunder RTI version 1.6.3 VR. Save file. And then extract all. And uh, you could just put it anywhere. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new folder here for the sake of the video. New folder. And extract. Okay, and then I'll just leave this open for now. Next, there'll be a link in the description to the HUD file. Go ahead and download that. Come over here, download, and save file. Open that zip, and then take the profiles and in your main folder not uh not the folder i created the folder that was un unzipped just drag profiles and if you have already have a profiles folder just go ahead and merge it and overwrite any files and then you can open the app or info run anyway and there it is the name of the file i created is a HUD underscore VR and it has all the different indicators I went over in a previous video but if you ever want to change anything like when engine temperature appears and the colors and stuff you can double click engine temperature and then you can adjust uh, like when the value is becomes visible uh, this is in Celsius. I think it has the option for Fahrenheit, but anyway, uh, you can set up when the alert appears and so on. Uh, I, I highly recommend um, creating a, a profile for each aircraft. And since I adjusted something, it'll have a star next to the name here, and the only way to clear that is to save it. Okay, so now that that's done, let's launch War Thunder, and I'll show you how to do the controller bindings. Okay, now that you have the games booted up, make sure you have your controllers on because it makes the process easier. First thing is go to a test flight. Doesn't matter which aircraft. Pick. Okay, and then if the uh, display doesn't appear, you can press uh, Control Alt V, and that should turn tracking on. And you can place it where you want, and press Control S, and that'll save its position. Uh, if you want to bring the display closer to you, press Shift Alt uh, Page Down, further away, Shift Alt Page Up. If you want to move it left, right, up and down, that's shift, alt, arrow keys, up, down, left, right. And then if you want to make it larger and smaller, shift, alt, control, or no, just shift, alt, Q, and shift, alt, E. Okay, now for controller bindings. Uh, I currently have mine set up for my left controller. 
However, you can set it up for both controllers and you can toggle tracking for, for instance, this is on my right controller, this is on my left controller. Right. So first thing, go to your Steam VR overlay, which I do by pressing this button here on the index controllers. If you have the original Vive controllers or Oculus, I'm not entirely sure how to do it, but I'm certain the process is similar. Okay, next go to controller bindings and then go to active controller binding custom and then edit this binding Oops. it's a little punchy so show more applications scroll down until you get to WTRTI so like that now I've already created bindings for this so for First thing you want to do is go to create new binding. And then let's do a new binding. So I have currently have nothing assigned to trigger. So I'll click on the plus sign. And I will assign this trigger as a button. And there you go. Now it gives me two options. Uh, I can have it touch, which because this has capacitive sensors, I can just press my finger on it. Or I can do click, which it will register the click as uh, the action. I can also do, uh, like if it's held, or if it's a single click, double click. So let's just do single click. And then you have uh, Boolean actions, no, act no vector actions yet. So let's say I want to assign this to show vehicle information. Now this is a, a hold binding, but we'll try it anyway and see what happens. So go ahead and set yourself up. I prefer to set everything up on my left controller and then place it down by my throttle so that I don't have to take my hand off the joystick while I'm flying to uh, change my overlay from helmet mounted to a HUD. And you can see here I have it set up so my thumbstick is used like a d-pad where if I move it to the left like that and click it will save the overlay's current position. If I move it to the west and click it'll reset its position and then if I click in the center, it will enable uh, left controller tracking. And then I have for touch, this is in click mode. I have the same D-pad, but in touch mode, when I push it north, it increases the size of my display. When I push it south, it decreases my overlay size. Uh, my B button, I have set up for when I click it down, it toggles the overlay on and off. The A button toggles tracking mode, which I'll demonstrate that in a second. And then that's uh, all I have bound on this. Uh, for my right one, uh, I just have some simple stuff like show vehicle information and the Honda overlay and right controller tracking, which I never use my right controller because, um, like I said, I don't want to take my hand off the joystick. And then for the system button, I didn't want to rebind the click because I need that to bring up this Steam VR overlay. But I do have it set up so that uh, when I t just touch this button, it will display the vehicle information. And again, I added show vehicle information to the trigger, which I typically don't like to because sometimes when it's laying down on the desk, the trigger will get pushed down and uh, whoops. It will talk, like activate whatever I have assigned to that. Right, so let's go to save personal binding. And just name it whatever. Save. Takes it a moment. Go back. 
You can see our current binding is this new one. Back again, back, close, and then press the system button to close this window. And as you can see, I'm, I'm well, as you can't see, pulling the trigger and the vehicle information appears. And uh, when I also touch my system button, the vehicle information appears. Toggle the display on and off. Toggle head tracking and toggle back to HUD mode. Let's see, increase size, decrease size using my thumbstick. Uh, that is reset position. And toggle tracking back on. That's save position. And reset position. And the reset position goes back to bring my desktop. Whatever you have saved here in this VR tab. So default is 0, 0 and 0 0.5. So that's your X, Y, and Z axis. Uh, you can also adjust the rotation and the size of the display here. Uh, you can adjust the curvature, the opacity. Then, uh, once you're done setting everything up, you can click on this save icon. And here it will auto-populate the name of the aircraft and then click save. So now whenever you enter an aircraft with a saved profile, it should automatically load that. And let me get back to the game. That is pretty much it. So happy flying. Hope this was helpful.